Okay, so welcome everyone. Um, I am Helen Frost. I'm one of the careers consultants in the Faculty of Science and Engineering. So for some of you, this might be your very first interaction with the Career Service, and I am your primary career consultant, although you can, of course, speak to any of us um, within the Career Service. Um, so I'd just like to introduce, first of all, uh, my colleague, or allow Ben to just say hello. Hi everybody, uh, I'm Ben. Uh, I am a colleague of Helen's. I have the same role. Um, you may well find my name attached to other appointments. You can book to see any of us within the team, uh, but you'll probably see me associated with different departments more directly. Okay, thanks Ben. Um, so Ben is going to be um, managing a lot of the chat, so if any of you have any questions as we go through, then please feel free um, to just make a note of those in the chat. If we do come to the end and any haven't been answered, we'll, we'll of course um, do our best to talk through the answers then. So, so hang around if you've got a question or you want to maybe come off mute at the end and ask that. Um, so the purpose of today's session is um, really uh, to do with, um, a f it's to give you a flavour of both what you can expect from the career service and also what you need to do to get in really good shape so that you can start to make some of those really important careers decisions over the next three to four years. So you've probably heard before that the earlier you start, the better. Um, well, it's great for you to be here today. So hopefully you will at least take one thing from today that, that will help you on that journey. Um, OK, so we should be lasting around 45 minutes. Um, so without further ado, let's um, let's get going. Fine. So the diversity of us as a career service um, and as a university and also the city of Manchester makes me feel quite proud. So we've included this slide just to acknowledge that we recognise that all of you have different life experiences, backgrounds, identities, and everyone faces their own challenges and bumps in the road. So we want to let you know that we're here for you. We understand all of that. We don't have judgment. We'll help you as much as we can. So if anyone has any concerns, maybe about a recruitment process or perceptions that people might have of you through any sort of um, application or, or recruitment process, we can help you to tackle that. So please do reach out to us. So before we get cracking with the, the main part of today's talk, I just wanted to run a, um, a quick poll just to see how you are all feeling at the moment. So in a second, uh, you'll see a poll on the screen. And I wonder if you could just answer the question, how confident are you in knowing how to build your skills for your future employability and where to start? So tell us how confident you're feeling. Just give it a few seconds just to let everyone um, click that. OK. Right. Just a couple more seconds. I think there's some people that haven't ticked a box yet. So if you are on the call and you would like to interact, then please do tick one of those buttons. Got quite a mix of answers so far, actually, which is really nice. Right. OK. I'm going to close it now, just in the interest of time. Um, so I think most of you have um, have ticked a box. Right, let me just share with you what, what people have said. So we've not got anyone that's feeling very confident, and that's not unusual at this stage. So in your first year, you're still finding your feet a bit, maybe, and you're not quite sure what to do. There are some of you who are reasonably confident, so, so that's good. There's still room for, for improvement there, and hopefully you'll learn something today. Um, but the, the vast majority of you are feeling not, not confident at all, not sure, not particularly confident. So you're in the right place, and hopefully everyone will be able to take something from today. OK, so let's we, what we'll do is we'll run that poll again towards the end of the session, just so we can see if anything's changed. So um, if you've got a pen and paper next to you, scribble down a few notes as we go that you can maybe just refer to after the session. OK, Ooh, let's move slides on. Right, there we go. So you are all sort of coming towards the end of your first year, sort of two thirds of the way through. And based on the students that we've spoken with um, 
throughout Ben and I's time with the university, you're probably in one of three stages of thinking about your career. So you might identify with one of these or none of these. Um, none of these things on the screen that you're going to see are wrong, but it's important to recognise where you are now and then how you can maybe move your thinking forward by taking some action. So the first stage is where you might be thinking that the time's not right yet for you to start thinking about this career thing. OK, so graduation's miles away. I've got ages to think about my career or maybe your university life, meeting new people and exploring Manchester, whether that's virtual or not, um, is more important at the moment. So that's fine to be thinking that. But. Even though graduation is a long way off, the earlier you start to think about what you want to do afterwards, the easier you will find it later to make decisions and thinking about that competitive job market. You know, you'll, you'll make more progress if you start to think about it now. And we'll give you some ideas for how to do that as we move through. Um, and secondly, I suppose your outside interests are all important. You know, so making friends while you're at uni is the start of what we call networking. And you'll probably hear more of that either in this presentation or others that you um, you attend over the next few years, because really you never know who you might meet now who ultimately could help you in the future. So however, um, However you want to make time, I would probably set aside maybe an hour each week just to do some research, to reflect on where you're up to, to ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions about careers and really just spend some time thinking about the possibilities. So the second stage is where you might be feeling a bit worried. And we hear from a few people who are don't know where to start, don't know what to do with my life. I've ended up on this course and, you know, maybe I'm not sure I want to be here, um, but actually I don't know where this is going to take me. Some of you might be thinking, I, I, I've got here, I've worked really hard, I just need to concentrate on my degree. Um, some of you might just be struggling a bit, you know, maybe thinking about your career is a bit scary, maybe you've got other things to deal with. So um, most people, or many should I say, of the students we talk to, don't have a clue what they want to do or where to start. And that's OK, we can help you with that. Um, a lot of the uh, appointments that we have are to have that very conversation. So please don't feel that you can only make contact with us or visit us or book an appointment if you've got a ready formed idea about the direction you want to take. We've got resources that can help you no matter which stage you're at. And absolutely, you need to spend time on your studies. But if all that you do over the next three to four years is concentrate on your studies, all you're going to end up with at the end is a piece of paper with a degree classification on it. It may not get you very far. So what you need to start thinking of doing is using your time while you're at uni, especially in those earlier years, to just build up those skills, build up your experiences so that you've got more to offer to a future employer. Or maybe just that bottom point, maybe you're struggling and we get that. It takes time to adapt. It's maybe scary to think about life choices, you know, but think about um, not making a decision now that's going to stick with you for the rest of your life. People move around and that's absolutely fine. You don't have to rush, but what you do need to start doing is being inquisitive and asking questions. So we're here to help. Um, we're always available to talk to you about, about any of that. Um, and we can direct you to other parts of the university if you are really struggling or need any further support with your university life. Um, stage three is where we'd like to get, we'd, we'd like you to get to. So, and that is if you're not there already, I suppose. So it's the inquisitive stage. So moving towards taking action. So what have we got here? Um, the career service. So who are we? We can help you to think things through. We can point you in the right direction. We can offer you advice or guidance or even practice for things that uh, re relate to employability. So we've got resources that you can view, contacts that you can get in touch with and sessions that you can interact with us uh, at. So we'll talk about that a bit more later. CV. So definitely think about it. Start building it now um, and that will help you to then identify the gaps so that you know what you need to do about it. Where do you need to fill those gaps over the next few years? Please don't wait until the end of your final year to look at an empty CV and then panic that you've got nothing on it. Um, finally, just thinking about experience. So think really broad at this stage. Some experience is better than none. 
and that's even uh, if it's not related to your degree course. So, you know, working in a shop or a bar or a restaurant or an office is a really great start and it'll enable you to start building those transferable skills. Um, so thinking about teamwork, customer service, um, decision making, problem solving, all of those, those um, skills that you've probably heard of. And it's all the skills that employers look for. So experience in the, the world of work in this way, you know, let's say you have a Saturday job in, in a shop, will also demonstrate that you've got a work ethic so that you can multitask with your degree and any work opportunities that you have. And you can commit to responsibility. So it's all stuff that employers look for. Okay, so we're going to look now at how you can access the career service and our, um, our resources. So Career Connect, some of you may have found it, it looks like this on the screen now, is your one-stop shop for finding events that you can go to, job opportunities, and also to book appointments um, with one of us to talk through any aspect of your decision making or otherwise. So the way that you can find it, you can either go into our Career Service website and there is a tab at the top that says Career Connect, or alternatively, just do a Google search for UOM Career Connect and you will find it that way as well. And on this site, you can set up personalised uh, job adverts, uh, sorry, job alerts for adverts for events. Um, and you can take control of your own bookings for events and appointments and, and access everything 24-7. Also on Career Connect, there's a discovery zone, so that will give you some job hunting tips in a particular sector, maybe, and also thousands of opportunities on there, ranging from volunteering through to short term internships, placements, part time work, all the way through to graduate jobs. So just make yourself familiar with that now and it can make it easier for you to find what you need in the future. Um, so, um, I would really encourage you to have a look at that after today's session. You can also see a list of workshops and employer-led events for semester two on our website. Um, and or you can go directly to um, Career Connect. And if you miss one of these sessions, please don't worry because the majority of them we record and then we upload them to our YouTube channel. So again, if you just search for Manchester careers within YouTube, you will find the right place. Um, and as we've done so many of these events now virtually, uh, we've tried to arrange them by theme and playlist so that you can more easily find what it is you're looking for. So you'll find videos on CV writing, job searching and a variety of other stuff. And also, I suppose we'd we'd encourage you to get into the habit of spending some time on a regular basis to reflect on on you and plan for your future, because it won't be long before you have to start making decisions. So the earlier you start to think about it, the, the better. And one habit that you could get into is maybe try and attend a careers event each week. Some of them are only half an hour long um, or maybe watch one back on the YouTube channel if the timings don't work for you. And don't just stick to the events or the companies that you already know something about. Maybe try something new. You know, be a bit curious and you never know what you might discover or who you might meet um, that might take you in a different direction. This semester, we have run a whole host of online workshops, such as bite-sized sessions, and we've created new resources as well to complement uh, those from last semester. Um, they're based around these five key themes that are in the middle here, which is what um, you and other students have told us that you wanted. So we've got sessions on networking and LinkedIn at the moment, so you can have a search for those um, on Career Connect. Um, so maybe just register to one and see how you get on. OK, so um, just working around, I'm going to pick out a couple of these rather than all of them. Um, when we talk about employer panels, that's where we normally invite a couple of employers in. Um, they'll talk a little bit about themselves and um, anyone can ask them a question. So you can just go to those events and either just listen or if you've got a burning question, you can type it in the chat or you can come off mute and talk to somebody. We've got online workshops similar to this, or we've also got some more skills building sessions as well. Um, meet the professionals, or you may see that it's called Meet the Graduates. So that's where alumni from the University of Manchester come back and talk to you. 
Um, we've got uh, on campus drop in sessions. We've also got virtual drop in sessions. So whatever is right for you, you will find something. You can just use all of these as keyword searches, by the way, on Career Connect and you'll find hopefully what you need. Q&A sessions, that's where myself, Ben, Penny, who is our other um, science and engineering career consultant, we will just be on a Zoom call and you can turn up and ask us a question or you can just turn up and listen to what other people are asking. So that's just a flavour of some of the sessions that we run. Another way that you can access us is um, through social media. So we're on Facebook, Twitter, we've got a blog, we're on YouTube, we're on Instagram actually as well, which is a fairly recent thing, but it seems to be um, getting a lot of engagement. So you can find um, our social media accounts through this link tree here. So the link is just on the screen there. Um, and most departments also have their own either careers Facebook page or a LinkedIn group or something like that that you can join. So you can um, follow your career consultants on the majority of these, um, these platforms. But the big one that I would really like you to engage with is LinkedIn. So um, this is great for now in terms of starting to build your network. So who do you know? And of course, you can start small with people on your course, friends, family, academics. But then over time, you can grow your network. So people that you meet at a careers fair and people that you hear talking at a presentation, for example, you can add them. And also you can develop that even further. We could do a whole session on LinkedIn. So I'm keeping this quite high level for now. But feel free to search for LinkedIn on our YouTube channel if this is something that really interests you and you want to um, get cracking with it um, and you'll find out where to start and what to do. So um, we as careers consultants and the careers team all have a LinkedIn profile so um, all of our names are there so if you have another device with you at the minute or you want to open LinkedIn now please connect with at least Ben or myself but also our other colleagues Penny or Hannah um, there's our pictures on the screen so it's easy to spot um, the right Ben Carter and the, the right Helen Frost um, so we're happy to accept um, LinkedIn requests from anyone as long as you have a link to the University of Manchester normally. Um, okay, so if you do nothing else over the next few months, over summer, please get a, a LinkedIn profile off the ground and start to build your contacts. Um, because I think there are limitations on LinkedIn in terms of how many you can, how many people you can add at a time. So it might be that you need to do that gradually. Um, okay, so that's a, a bit about LinkedIn. Um, if you do want any more LinkedIn support, I mentioned that we've got recorded sessions there. Um, there's also, if you like, if you're someone who likes to learn by reading, we've got a section on our career service um, website, which is all about what is LinkedIn, how's it useful, what do I need to do with that? And then just on the right there, you can see um, all of the different sessions. So you could just pick one of those maybe on LinkedIn just to get you started. So I'm going to hand over to Ben at this stage, who's just going to talk to you a bit about CVs. Indeed. Thanks very much, Helen. So I will uh, I'll take it on for a little bit here to talk through yeah, CV creation and things you might want to be considering right now. Um, there's a few things we think you can get in place in first year. While we kind of want to take it slowly so that you've got time to enjoy your first year, there are definitely things which you can set up to make your life easier when you go into second year and beyond, when you start to become more eligible for a lot of the opportunities that are out there. LinkedIn and your CV have a definite interplay. There are things you're going to put into both of those. So by doing one, you are definitely helping yourself with the other as well. So let's get into that a little bit. Now, some of you may not have a CV yet. That is fine. This may be the very first time you've had to think about it. And so to that end, some thoughts, first of all, on what is this thing? and what you need to do. So in, in, in summary, it's a document which is gonna be a rundown of what's good about you. What do you want people to know about you as a candidate, as somebody who might be looking for a job, some work experience, an internship, whatever you wanna call it. It's a summary of what you've achieved, uh, of the education you've picked up along the way, uh, the additional experiences that make you an interesting person. So. In summary, it gives you something to offer potential employers to give them a bit of a rundown of 
why you would outcompete somebody else. Now, I appreciate as soon as we start talking about outcompeting, we start to get into areas of self-promotion, and that can be um, a, a tricky thing to uh, to want to come to terms with. Not everybody wants to talk themselves up, and so we'll take that gently. You don't have to talk about being the best at everything in your CV. You just want to present some facts. If it's easy to think of it in those terms, in what you are good at rather than what you are the best at, then yeah, take it slow. You're typically going to get asked for this when you apply for all kinds of different roles. Now, depending on the size of employer, some may have a different process. They might want you to take your CV to bits and put it into an online application form. That's fine. But the more traditional approach is to ask for your CV and something called a cover letter or a motivational letter. We won't get into the cover letter today, but that's another um, careers art form. It's something which you're going to have to throw yourself into at some point. And we've got a lot of resources to help you with that. But for today, we're just going to go through the bare bones of the CV, some of the things that people will have put into it by the time they leave Manchester. In essence, the format that we got up on screen here is usually two pages. One page is fine. You will get away with one page. It's not a problem. In certain parts of the world, it's expected that you'll stick to one page. But if we're just going to concentrate on the UK jobs market, two pages is perfectly fine, even for you as a first year student. You might be thinking, I've not got two pages of material here. In which case, not a problem, stick to one page, make it well packed. If you can fill out that second page, fantastic. You don't want to have just white space for the sake of it, but somehow having a half empty second page, it, it can sort of psychologically just create that impression in your reader of, okay, where's the rest? So if you can fill out one page or fill out two pages, that is the best place to be. The format we'll get into in a second. Um, I will take you through uh, one of the template CVs that, we, that we've got on our website. And you can download that template from there. And we've even got a pathway on Career Connect, which will walk you through the CV creation process, right? Put things together step by step. Um, but what you're looking to do is create something which is an easy read. You know, the format needs to be accessible above all things, something which your reader can get through quickly and easily. They can find the information they want. They're not confused by reading your CV. If they can find easy to read headings, if you can direct their attention to the things that are going to be most helpful for them, that's great. And if that starts with such things as what are you studying right now, don't leave that out. It's important for them to see things like that. I have seen people leave off the degree that they're studying for from their CV because they're of, of the opinion that, well, I haven't finished it yet. Surely it can't be on my CV. Yes, it can. <laughs> things that are still in progress, that's perfectly good material to include. And that goes for your degree, pieces of coursework, lab work you may be engaged with. This is all good stuff to include. Don't feel like it has to be left off until it's complete. That can also go for part-time jobs you may have. It might go for things like um, online courses that you're taking, um, you know, learning that you're doing outside of lecture theatres. This is all good stuff. So do consider this when you're putting th the thing together. You'll see when we get onto the, uh, the worked example that it's not prose text. It's not full sentences. As I said, you're looking to make this an annotated read for your, um, for your assessor. Somebody, uh, somebody can get through and decide, okay, that didn't take me long. This person has clearly um, put this together for my ease of reading. The easier you can make your reader's life, the better it's going to be in general. Finally, this may seem like a strange thing to specify, but once again, I've seen loads of people go about this the wrong way, literally the wrong way. They've started with their oldest experience and sort of worked their way forward from there as they've gone down the page. Hmm. Please work the other way around. Start with your most recent stuff. I can't honestly give you a strong reason why you need to do this other than that everybody does it. And so because CV tradition has just wound up this way, if you do it the other way around, just because you think, well, no, that's my style. I want to start with stuff that's furthest back and talk somebody through my narrative. You run the risk that somebody who's in a hurry, and you should always assume your reader is in a hurry, is going to look at this and go, mm, okay, that's the most recent thing you did because they're expecting to see your most recent material first. They'll expect a reverse chronological order. So try not to stray from that. Start with the most recent, work your way back from there as you go down the page in each section. Let's look at a CV. Um, this CV is uh, it's it's going to be quite general. I think it's for a maths uh, student. Yes, indeed. So don't worry about what the subject is. What we're looking at here is the format and the sorts of things being put in here. And this assumes somebody in their final year of study 
somebody's had the chance to pick up some experience along the way and do various things in their time at the university. So what have we got on here? We've got various things. Um, but first, let's, uh, let's concentrate on format. As you can see, as you scan through this page, a CV should have easy to spot section headings. We've got education, we've got relevant work experience, positions of responsibility, additional skills, interests, um, as well as other work experience at the top of page two. One interesting point here is that this is geared to try and draw the reader's attention to the most useful stuff on page one. You've always got to consider who is going to be reading your CV and what are you sending it in for? Ideally, I don't want you to have one CV that fits all. You know, I'd like you to make small changes to your CV as time goes by. And as you send out each application, that could just be based on the things they want in uh, for a particular role, um, whether that's an internship, a piece of work shadowing, an insight event, we'll get into what those are in a second. But if you can go through and tweak it slightly, maybe move things around, we, we, we've got a relevant work experience section here. And that's lovely for this individual who's had the time to put together that much work experience. But consider that the if we took the word work out of that section heading, and we just had relevant experience, you can then tailor that section to suit your purposes. You can pull in things. If you felt, for example, looking at this CV, that you know, University of Manchester Math Society was a great piece of evidence for filling certain criteria for the job, then you can pull that in. You could put that on page one. You can move things around. This is a fluid document. It can be dynamic, and that can be to your advantage. Make small changes as you go to draw your reader's attention to different things over time. For right now, you might be thinking, well, that's lovely, but I've not got that much experience yet, in which case, fine. Maybe the CV won't change that much from one application to the next. Make a master copy for now. And once you've got that, then keep it safe. You can keep tweaking it as time goes by, as you add more entries to it. That master copy can form the basis for all the other CVs that you make. No one ever needs to see the master copy, in fact, because you can just tweak it, make a new version, and send it off as needed. Let's look at, look at it in a little bit more detail. From the top, you notice what it doesn't say here? It doesn't say CV anywhere, because it doesn't need to. Um, that is wasted words, and space is at a premium when you're putting one of these things together. So it's just got your contact details. It's got a LinkedIn link there. Um, you don't even have to have a snail mail address if you don't want one. And if, you, if you really need to save space, it can just be email, mobile, LinkedIn, that's it. Even LinkedIn you may not have yet. So. That can be a uh, space well used if you want to keep that to a minimum. We've then got education. Now, this particular, uh, uh, this particular CV, we've got a certain amount of detail about the degree, including things like uh, software, mathematical modeling, things like this, as well as um, transferable skills picked up from the degree. Don't forget this stuff. You, know, you may be tempted just to have one line explaining what you've been studying and where you've been studying it. But let's assume that there's a lot more you're going to take away from your degree. And be that uh, technical work, lab work, field work, um, there are all manner of things, coursework, project work, all of these things which you could include in the education section. By the time you've done all that, once you get to year three, say, that's a very big section. I would say, you know, maybe consider, is there material there that could go into your relevant experience section one day? Maybe give it a section of its own if you want to show off your technical skills in one way or another. So education sections start here, start adding in things which you want people to know about your educational experience. And that includes uh, what you may have studied prior to coming to Manchester. And before university, this doesn't have to be hugely detailed. Um, you just basically want to show people what you entered the university with. You will still be asked for this stuff. You may find it surprising that people ask you, OK, tell me what you went to university with. You may think, why is that relevant now? A lot of employers want to see what your track record of education is like. So don't worry if people ask for this, but you can have it summarized in brief in your CV. Then we get into the relevant experience section. Now, this individual is looking towards uh, the CV was put together as an example for someone wanting to go into the actuarial profession. So we've got that as an example. We've got an internship in that very area. And this is something which you can aspire to. It's not something you have to have immediately in your CV, but as you start to create more workplace experience, it gives you more to talk about. And as Helen mentioned before, everybody's going to leave this university with that piece of paper which says you've got a degree um, of one classification or another. Everybody's going to have that. 
when we talk to employers, and we see a lot of them in the course of the year, we're one of the, we, in fact, we are the most targeted university in the country for graduate employers. More of them come to us than anywhere else in the country. So when they do, a frequent observation is that everybody's going to leave with a degree. So what else can you talk about? You know, what else can you tell them you've picked up along the way? Work experience is a great thing to do. Um, we do recommend you pick some up. This year, it's not easy to do that. We fully acknowledge that. I'll show you some resources for what else you can find in a second. But hopefully this, uh, this section is going to grow through your time at university. What else, though? There's going to be other experience you picked up along the way as well. So your further work experience, the other things you've done, this could be part-time work, it could be um, customer service of different sort, um, it could be all manner of different things. It could be volunteering. You know, it doesn't have to be um, paid work experience. But those other roles you've had, it could be in the community, it could be um, uh, uh, it, it, it could be um, it could be a local place of worship, something like that. So whatever it is. Look for what the positives are. Ask yourself, OK, what did I take away from that? Particularly for things which are really familiar, and that could be things like you know, uh, being a, a bar supervisor, a waiter, something like that, where people know what the role involves. Don't focus too much on the day to day, what the duties were. Ask yourself what changed? You know, what was different about your experience? You know, what did you take away from it? Again, what are the transferable skills which you acquired along the way? You need to get that stuff into your CV because if you don't tell people, they have to assume what you've taken away. And that's, again, that's more time they have to spend thinking about it. Don't take that risk. Tell them what you took away and, and show them what you took away. Demonstrate where the skills have come from. Uh, and suddenly, once again, you're making their lives easier. Next section, positions of responsibility. That is to say, things which don't maybe fit under a category of volunteering or work experience, that kind of thing. So the examples we got here are being involved in a university society as, also, as well as things like being a, a past leader and looking at you, you may be involved in past at the moment. And if you're enjoying it, if it's something you'd like to give back to, it's something we see on CVs a lot. It's a great way to pick up uh, experience of helping others, of you know, building your p uh, public speaking skills and just building your, your CV in different uh, different directions. So here you've got two different examples, but there's lots of others which you could acquire along the way. And this could be sports teams. It could be through um, uh, entrepreneurship. You could have a business of your own. Uh, there's a lot of things which you could have in this section. Finally, a couple of sections, a couple of catch-all sections. We've got one here for uh, additional skills. Um, that is to say things which uh, you just want to summarize all in one place. Um, Things like technical skills are good to do here because software, hardware, programming languages, operating systems, it's good to have all of those um, where somebody can find them. Um, languages, driving licenses, first aid, uh, professional memberships often fall here as well. So this is once again a catch-all section for other things you'd like people to know about you. Finally, don't ignore the interest section. A lot of people may try to tell you that, no, that's, that's not professional information. People don't need to know that. I disagree. I think this is very useful information. It's not the thing which will get you the job, but it's a hook. It's something when somebody reads through your CV, it allows them to see what else are you into. It shows you as a person, not just as a candidate. So if you wanted to have a short interest section which specifies a few things you enjoy outside of your work and your studies, please put it in, find the space for it. It's it's interesting the number of times I've spoken to employees who said, no, I like to start with the interest section because uh, it tells me more about the candidate and reading through, well, various other parts of the CV. I, I like to get to know them as a person first. I've, of, I've also heard from plenty of people who said, yeah, my, my interview got completely derailed uh, in a good way because uh, my interviewer just wanted to talk about this one thing in my interest section that we were both into. If your assessor happens to share your interest, it's golden. It, it allows you to engage them on a completely different level. So don't ignore this section. Okay, so final thought on the CV structure. We've looked at Sam Willis here from one angle and we've used the template which is available on the Career Service website to construct the CV. But you can do your own thing with this. If you use that template and just that template, your CV, your CV is gonna look like everybody else's. And you don't necessarily want to look like everybody else. So what if we had a small adjustment? Same information, different format, a 
slight change just to um, use the space in a different way. Now, is it perfect? Maybe not. We've got more white space on the page here. That column down the left hand side is not the most efficient use of space, but it looks different to other people's. Subtle use of color, some slight restructuring, but the same, the, exactly the same information, in fact. So, yeah, have a play around with it. Make it your own. Come up with your own format. And, and indeed, there are loads of templates out there. You'll find plenty of different ways to construct a CV online. So go looking for them. Find what works for you. Create your look once you're happy with the, the content. And I suppose the, um, the way of structuring a CV, then you can worry about uh, how it looks when somebody finally opens the document. Okay, a few other thoughts. We've looked at CVs, how you can start to construct that document itself, but what else are you gonna do to, uh, to add things to it as you go through year one? Here are some thoughts. Um, you can spend time on, I guess, preparing for the assessment process. Now, I mentioned before this thing called Pathways, and when you get into um, Career Connect, into our, uh, into our portal there, you'll find a tab for pathways, and these are structured workflows that allow you to go through CV creation, cover letter creation, interview preparation, even looking ahead to things like, if you want postgraduate study, I appreciate that's a little ways off, but we try to cover a lot of different options with these pathways. And one of the things you'll find at the end of the CV pathway is this thing, career set. It is an automated tool. It is applicant tracking software which mimics the same kind of thing which a lot of employers use to scan your CV and look for the kind of keywords they would like to find. So if you've got your CV put together and you want some immediate feedback, take it to CareerSet. And that will scan through it. It'll give you some feedback on what, what looks good, what could be changed. It'll also let you then book in for an applications review appointment and get one of us at Careers to take a look through it as well. If you think that you've got all that in hand, you want to get ahead of the game, um, may I recommend taking a look at something called Shortlist Me. Again, you'll find the links for this under interview preparation on our website. Now, this is uh, as a response to a new, relatively new development in, uh, in, in interviews, which is to say that a lot of larger companies are using recorded interviews as a way of um, assessing candidates and kind of minimizing the amount of time they've got to put in. Um, picture the scene, if you will. Um, you've, you got through the first stage of an application uh, you sent in the CV, the cover letter, that's all gone well. You get an email back saying, okay, great, you're through. Your next stage, go to this link, please. You'll find some interview questions there. Read them, and then we'd like you to record your answers to these interview questions on camera. And those answers will then get sent off and assessed by somebody at the company. If this sounds troubling, if you don't like the sound of this, you're in good company. A lot of people don't enjoy this part of, uh, uh, of assessments, but because of the pandemic in particular, it has really become more popular as a way of allowing candidates to kind of take the interview at their own pace, at least in the early stages. And uh, yeah, uh, it makes life easier for the assessors as well because they can then review your answers in their own time. If you wanna try this out before the real thing, We've got software that'll do that for you. Shortlist me is to try and plug this gap in your knowledge. If you've never tried out a recorded interview before, then please go do it because you'll be that much happier uh, when you're faced with the real thing. How else are you gonna pick up experience? I talked about the different sections that you can have in your CV and how you can, um, how you can build those. Here are some thoughts on some of the different things you can do. I mentioned a couple of these as we went along. Societies, are definitely part of this. Um, student representation that you can acquire through a uh, student's union is part of this as well. So please see what you can acquire. You know, getting involved with the life of the university is one of the easiest things you can do. Peer support, being a past leader, being a, past, uh, a peer mentor in one way or another, or just helping people, you know, if you find yourself coming out the other side of, say, a placement year or something like that and helping people prepare for their applications. This is all good stuff to include on your CV. As I mentioned, you saw there on the um, on the Sam Willis CV, pass is a very common entry. So have that in there, talk about what the benefits are. Volunteering, there are so many options at the volunteering hub for helping out around the city. And it's a good way to get exposure to different workplaces. Um, I appreciate it's not gonna get you paid, but it does immediate, immediately create um, uh, an image of you in your assessor's mind when they're reading through your CV and they see you're prepared to give of your time without wanting, uh, wanting to get paid for it, it's good stuff to have on there. So if you have a volunteering section, then more power to you. 
I mentioned as well having your own business or wanting to start your own business. Now, if you're interested in that, then look up something called the Masood Entrepreneurship Center. This is the, uh, the MEC is the, uh, the body at the university that supports students who want to start their own business one day. You don't have to do it overnight, but if you want to know how it works, what your options are, be put in touch with people who've done it and see the support that's in place, then yeah, the MEC is there to try and provide you with that support. What else? Here's some of the more traditional stuff. You may be thinking, yeah, that's lovely. You know, looking at starting a business one day, can, can I just find an internship, something like that? Yes, you can. Some of you may have already looked for this and perhaps been put off by this irritating phrase, penultimate year students only. I'm afraid that's not going anywhere. That's been in place for a little while now. And to get around that, you as first year students may find there are other things which you can look to instead. And I mentioned something before called an insight event. And you'll notice on screen here, there is a screen grab from a website called Gradcracker. Gradcracker is a great resource because it's one of the few places that um, will allow you to filter for opportunities open to first years during the summer months and also insight events. Insight events are shorter opportunities, often during the spring break, um, which allow you just to go see for a day or so what a company does. Get it on your CV, get their name on there and start building that sense of commercial awareness of what does a company do without having to commit too much of your time. So Gradcracker is a great resource for this, for finding options open to first years, but there are links on that page as well. We're looking at things like part-time jobs, virtual work experience. Again, as a symptom of the pandemic, a lot of places like Forage started offering opportunities for, um, uh, for virtual work experience. Sure, it's not directly in the workplace, but so many places operate on a hybrid working basis anyway these days. So you have to do a certain amount of your work online. There's also options to look into for international opportunities. If you're not going to be in Manchester or indeed in the UK during the summer months and you want to look further afield, then you'll find we have resources to support that as well. Incidentally, we will get these slides in the chat at the end of this session so you can take these away and follow all of these links. Whew. That's a fair bit to get through. And I hope I've not put you off by the sheer scale of what you could be involved with just now. This is stuff that you can do as you go through into second year. But if you can put some of these in, uh, some of these things in place and get to the point where you feel like second year is kind of a little, a little bit more set up for you. You've maybe got a CV, a LinkedIn profile um, already set up. You've maybe started the business of looking at insight events or networking with people, starting to understand your options, where you might want to go next. You maybe even talk to the career service and what some of these things are. That's a great position to be in. I'm going to pause there and hand back to Helen to close things out um, and just to maybe revisit how you think about all this stuff. Thanks, Ben. That was uh, that was really um, insightful. Um, so, yeah, <coughs> sorry, as Ben mentioned, I'm just going to close things up now and just give you a, a quick summary. So if you've not taken any notes yet. So this might be the time to get your pen and paper out because really your first through to second year is all about getting prepared. So that's practically um, in terms of your CV, your getting some interview practice, either through Shortlist Me that Ben mentioned or um, booking an appointment to go through that. Um, LinkedIn, so it's getting everything in the right place. It's knowing where to find resources. So familiarize yourself with Career Connect so that at that time when you start looking for an internship or you want to book an appointment, you know where to go and it's really straightforward. Set up some alerts um, if you're someone who forgets about it and you just need a prompt. Um, think about gaining some experience, whatever that may be. Ben gave you a few great suggestions there. So there's some smaller things that you can um, you can do a few different different parts of, or you can look for doing um, a full internship, a full placement, or something on a more regular basis. Um, but that will really help you to build your CV. And then building your networks. So start off with that LinkedIn. Thank you to the people who have already reached out to me on LinkedIn. Um, so I've accepted those requests that have come through. If anyone else wants to before the end of the session um, or afterwards, in fact, um, then, then that's absolutely fine. And that's a uh, first step on your journey here. And I think we've said it all the way through, but please start early. Um, don't leave it all to the last minute. Um, OK, so um, some homework for you. <laughs> Register on Career Connect. 
consider your options, explore your sectors, um, build a network, start a LinkedIn profile. We've talked about this, but hopefully it's starting to stick. Draft your CV, bring it along to CV week, use pathways on Career Connect, and please do ask for help if you need it. Um, that's it from us today. I hope you found um, some or all of that useful.